Good afternoon. So today I'd like to talk to you, give you a bit of inside knowledge about whose life we can expect to be saved by AI, and also about what role you may play yourself. But first I'd like to talk about the patient who started this, the person who inspired this talk. It was a young gentleman, not too dissimilar age to myself. He was driving home from work one day. It was late at night and unfortunately fell asleep at the wheel. He was driving home, fell asleep, and came off the road, had a big crash. Ultimately, he needed multiple life-saving operations. He then came up to critical care, and he was there for several days. It was a few days later that I saw him myself. It was 3 a.m., and he was slowly coming around. We explained to him what was happening, the fact he'd been in a life-threatening situation, but he was stable. We said that he needed to get some rest. We'll see him in the morning, and we'll explain what the next steps will be. It couldn't have been maybe two hours later by the point that I got a call from his nurse that he wasn't doing so well. I rushed over to his bedside. I saw him there. He looked scared. He said he felt dizzy. I looked over at the monitor and I saw his heart was now beating three times a second. His blood pressure had dropped by half in just two hours. He pulled me in close and said that he needed to get home because he's got a baby on the way. And his grip went loose. His eyes rolled to the back of his head. He passed out. He was bleeding. I pulled the buzzer. I called for help. There's 15, 20 people around this room now, all trying to save his life. It was several hours later by the time I walked home that morning. And all I could think about was the fact that how, how could I have known this was going to happen? And ultimately, this talk, could AI have told us this? Well, a lot of what you'll hear going on from this is that AI is taking over every industry, from finance, chat GPT, self-driving cars. And even in healthcare, well, all you'll read is the fact that it can not only predict better than every physician in the country or around the world, but it can personalize care. It can say, based on your age, your sex, your race, your family history, what your past medical history is, and say, this is the best for you. This is where my patient comes in. AI doesn't see you or I. It sees part of us, some data that's been collected by some machines. The problem is that AI is given in information, it then learns what's the best set of rules, and then it makes a prediction. But what about the information it doesn't see? Well, it can't learn from that. And so the same way that a doctor will learn from all the cases they've seen during their career, AI will do the same. And the more number of cases they've seen, and the more similar they are to the situation in front of them, the better the prediction. But what about if the closest match that AI has seen is someone of different sex, different race, 50 years older, 50 years younger? Does that represent you? And what about if the data they have is from someone on the other side of the world, or their data was never collected, or never shared with the research in making the algorithm? Who is the AI going to learn from then? So as we said, AI is just a tool that takes in some information, it learns, and it makes a prediction. But what's some of the best information that we have in healthcare? Well, it's these clinical trials, these multi-year, multi-million dollar trials, randomizing people to different treatments and then making a decision about what's best. But the fact these are so expensive means that actually these are happening in about 80% of the trials around the world, happening in about 20% of the countries. So we're learning knowledge from healthcare is in quite a small population. And when we look at actually who's included in these trials, what we see is this. So in the UK, for example, around 86% of that population in these trials are going to be white. And in the US, that's 80%. Now, it might only be 5 or 7% higher than what the census is, but it's 5 or 7% that's coming from another group that's underrepresented. And so when we think about the number of examples that AI may have for different groups, it's vastly different. And this is all coming during a time when around three quarters of the world is living in Africa and Asia. So if we were to train AI on some of this data, what we may see is it's expecting to see a world that's 80% white, but three quarters of the world and six billion people don't represent that picture. Now, with close to AI, what we usually do is train on hospitals, for example, but it's the same premise. So it's quite expensive to collect this data, to store this data, to process it, and to train it. And so all these algorithms are being optimized for specific cities or hospitals in parts of the world, only to be then be tested on a whole other group when it reaches a real world down the, in 20 minutes down the road, from New York to New Delhi to Sydney to Beijing. So the point is here is that 
It's not AI that's failing. It's just not seeing the real world. And so to bring it back to my patient, the patient I saw, well, my patient was black. And so if I did have that algorithm, that prediction that was going to say this was going to deteriorate, would it have worked for him? Would it work for me? Would it work for you? So AI is definitely not the failure here. It's learning from the information that's being given. Humans are not only imperfect students, but also imperfect teachers. If we want AI to actually work for everyone, everyone needs that opportunity to be represented in the data. If we want AI to work for you, people similar to you need to be represented in that data. This means healthcare organizations sharing their data with everyone, and researchers training their models in diverse data sets to make sure it works for everyone. And ultimately, the point here is that we need to remember that AI is only going to learn part of nature, part of nature that's been chosen by us. And the point is, we get to choose what nature we want to teach AI. And ultimately, we get to choose whose life AI might save. Thank you. <laughs>